Hello everybody and uh, welcome to our 2021 Spring New Introductions presentation. Uh, admittedly uh, a little late this year. Um, obviously as everyone can guess that's because of uh, Covid still rampaging the planet and the uh, trade shows uh, were all cancelled in uh, January and February. So yeah. uh, we're here again in the broom cupboard with our presentation. It's now April and hopefully uh, the shops will be open next week, so we thought it was the prime time to uh, to launch our presentation of uh, new pieces. Yeah, we want, we want, yeah, we wanted to make sure, basically, instead of going earlier, that, that everyone was more optimistic towards yes. hopefully a better and more normal future. Because I think that we're all struggling a little bit mentally. I am. But yes, <laughs> it's been a lot. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Absolutely. I also think the most frustrating thing is this year was going to be the 10th anniversary of when we actually launched Edge. So even though I've been sculpting them for longer than that to try and sort of get the look and feel right, it was actually 2011 we we launched Edge at the yep. Spring Fair. Spring Fair, I remember. Yeah, many moons ago. And since then, of course, we've, we've taken it everywhere, haven't we, to try and promote the brand. And I thought, think it's only when you haven't got trade shows to attend, the importance of them and the memories of them sort of um, hit home the most, I think. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, it's not just the shows, it's meeting the people, um, you know. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Getting new accounts yeah. and uh, meeting old and new friends, uh, you know, that's the, that's the thing, we haven't been able to do that for, for um, uh, over 12 months now. It does seem like a long time, yeah. doesn't it? And I, th I think with that, that in mind, I think that uh, we both sort of thought, I tell you what, we're gonna ask each other a question to bring the subject of trade shows, yeah. uh, um, you know, into, you know, our YouTube presentation. Exactly. I think you're going to start the ball rolling, Dan. I shall start the ball rolling, Yeah. Then. Okay, um, I, I have a, a simple question to start off with. Just See, I'm already going, it. right, okay. No, 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 nothing too bad, nothing too bad. So, yeah. so, so really, what has been your, I suppose, favourite show or favourite show experience, basically? Favourite favorite show experience? There's been so many. Right, I'm really tracking back. I would say, going back early, I would say, and I think it's 2000 and, yeah, we, we did a Harrogate show. Harrogate being a, a marquee show in the summer, mm. really, really nice. You've got these professional marquees built up. They're not tents, they're, they're, they're solid platforms. And they've really got a nice summer yeah. feel. To and, and we were in yeah. the... We are in the Cairn marquee, weren't we? The Cairn which, being, which I don't think they being, do anymore, do they? No, no Cairn so. being this really old-fashioned mm. spa-style hotel. You can imagine carriages and Edwardian times bringing people there. It was, and it's still like that. It's like mock marble yeah. everywhere. But I would say the first year was a warm-up. We did very well. But I'd say 2014, if I've got that correctly, yeah, that was brilliant. That was when the, it was red hot. Yeah. Um, we'd actually got... Uh, a, a room at the Cairn, yes. unlike previously where we were staying in this motorway service station, which we won't go it, into. It dreadful dreadful Weatherby service station. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was awful. awful. Um, unbeknownst to us. But but the Cairn, <laughs> the Cairn on the other, is completely the opposite. It was fantastic. It really yes, was. Lovely place. I mean, and 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 being 29 seconds away from the bar was a huge positive, I, I, a mammoth I, I positive. I think you could do it in 22, yeah. if you're thirsty. Yeah, but you don't want to look too desperate. But, <laughs> I don't, but, I don't but care. But no, I, I mean, it, it was, no, it was fantastic. The, every, you know, the way, the way everyone was treated there was fantastic as well, you know, delivering big jugs of beer to your table. Not whilst we were actually selling. No, of this course not. This is in the not. evening. No. We are very professional. But it was so hot then, I remember us chilling out, watching yeah, yeah. Fast and Loud, I think. <laughs> it was, yeah, One yeah, after yeah, the other. Right. On the on the laptop, and I, I think that for me, you yeah, you, you can't engineer those sort of um, happening sequences. But I think that no, that's got to be the most fun, and because it went so well. Yes, it went so well. Yeah, and it was World Cup here as well, wasn't it? I think 2014. 2014. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Yes. Well, I think it was on the on the Sunday the World Cup final. I think, and that was my yeah. birthday as well. So that was pretty good. And yeah, I'm, and I, and I think that. I think that's uh, the right one. Yeah, Dan's more keen on the football than I am, even though I, am, I do like watching it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, all of a sudden it was like, where's Dan? And he was in the bar yeah. with everybody else. However, that may be your, your in you know, there with your favourite show experience, but I do remember a bit of a, a wardrobe incident on that show. 
that was the right one, wasn't it? Yep. <laughs> yep. Is it coming it's to you It's haunting, now? yeah. <laughs> right, okay, put this into context. <laughs> when we first launched Edge in 2011, I thought we'd, we'd, um, we'd sort of like try and look as professional as we could, look, could launching a new brand. And of course the logo is black with white writing. And so I thought we'll wear black shirts and everything matching yeah. because it looks quite corporate. I mean, that was, that's the way the NEC and, and the Autumn Fair come across. It's the best way of doing it. However, when you've got a white badge with a, a black logo on it and you've got a black shirt, Apparently, not not is not what I thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it was it was commented to us that we looked a little bit right wing. <laughs> yes, which now I fascist. look now I look back, I actually think it's completely rubbish. But either way, I responded to this <laughs> badly <laughs> by basically thinking, I know we're doing a marquee show. This was year two. <laughs> We'd done Harrogate yeah. before, yeah. and I thought, I know. We'll be, we'll be summer appropriate, but still uniformed, and which is a like fatal error, <laughs> because I tried to match us up, and the best I could do, I got the, these shirts, and they were gingham shirts, which <laughs> I quite like, however, it was trying to match mine up with yours, yeah. almost exactly. Problem was, I couldn't get the sizes absolutely right. Dan, no, we're, 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 we're slightly we're, different yeah, frames. Yeah, we're, we're the same sort of height, but, <laughs> but, 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 but Dan's shirt fits fine. Now, I, I got cargo <laughs> trousers on, or I bought these cargo trousers to match Dan's and shirts to match yours. But I also thought, I know, we'll, we'll, we'll go casual with the footwear as well. And Dan wore his, I think, his Adidas it, it, trainers. It, yeah, yeah. And I had my um, sliders. sliders on. Anyway, they arrived at work, you know, because I ordered them on the internet. <laughs> And, uh, and, and we, we tried them on. We were literally only talking about three or four days to go. Yeah. And I, I wasn't convinced with mine at the time. However, I made the fatal error of going in and asking the girls in the office what they thought. And they all lied to me <laughs> really badly. And even then I'm thinking, are you, are you sure? Are you sure? It doesn't look embarrassing. It feels a bit. However, I, I told you that I thought it was the truth, and I thought it was a tad on the, yeah. the large side, especially your, your, yeah. your cargo yeah. trousers. You should have been more convincing! <laughs> because <laughs> on the morning of the show, of the morning of the show, and I haven't tried them on since, we got out the, you know, uh, shower different times, obviously. Uh, we're getting changed, and there's Dan, because he's always there first, because he's always more organised than me. And he's dressed and it's going, God, hurry up, Matt, I'm going, oh, for God's sake. I'll be there, don't worry. Anyway, he gets his, his, his gingham shirt on or whatever, and he's, I'm thinking, well done, Dad, you look great. I'll put mine on. And I don't know what it happened, but there was this length mirror. And as soon as I put this on, the panic started. And I looked, and this shirt, it almost, you know, it was, it was so long. And I looked at Dan, and the look of disdain and disgust on his face just <laughs> drained out. And, it, and he literally, instead of helping me with any sort of confidence, he goes, Matt, it doesn't look too, too bad at all. He couldn't even bring himself to do it, <laughs> no. could you? He literally, the door, as soon as I, I, I turned around, the door the closed, he's off for breakfast, and I'm looking, staring at this, this image of, I don't know, look like a clothesline in the mirror. That's making, sound no choice. Bit, that's making me sound a bit callous, but I had pointed this out before. I know, but what was even worse <laughs> is that it, all the starch in these cargo pants drained out of the material during the course of the day because it was red hot. Even those air conditioning, it was red hot. And they were, they were tied at the bottom. And by the time, by, the yeah. top, by three o'clock in the afternoon, the trousers had sagged and the outside material had gone all the way around my feet. Yeah, you, you, you look like a morph, I think. I looked dreadful. No feet. That was, uh, yeah. The irony is, it was a fantastic show. We did really, really well, but never to be repeated. I'll tell you what, it was a funny thing as well. Yes. When we did, the, when we did, when we did exactly the show a year later. Yeah. And it's the same people. And I've obviously abandoned this to summer look. And I, you know, put the jeans and shirt back on. And this lady of another stand comes running up to me and goes, oh my God, haven't you, look at the amount of weight you've lost. Because <laughs> obviously it looked like, you know, had the, yes, all of my weight gone sucked out with a razor gone. You lost it in cotton only though. Oh, it was, yeah, I know, but 
God, that's a nightmare. Honestly, you, you could build another marquee that with again. those cargo trousers, couldn't you? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, just, anyway, shall we shall we move this forward onto presentation? Well, we better have, otherwise it's going to take all night. Yes, yes exactly. Yes, so, okay. But however, before we do, uh, the girls always remind us to, to mention this wherever we can. Um, but this message to the, the stockists um, to place orders on our online Trade only uh, website. Trade only, trade only website yep. where you've got all the prices out there on there, all the images, etc. Um, and the new products, uh, new pieces, uh, which we're about to have a presentation for, will yep. be available on there from tomorrow morning to pre order. Being the 8th of so, April. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so please don't yeah. forget to do that. It's, it's very convenient because um, yeah. you can order day or night. Uh, so, so it's uh, available. And I'll also be posting up pictures on the uh, the Edge Sculpture Facebook page as well. Yeah. And okay. keeping, you know, answering questions on there, same as I did in the autumn, but okay. yeah. So we've done our administration duty, so it let's is. move on to the, the first presentation. Which is for, for... spring 2021, which is for the Hedgehog. Hedgehog, okay. Yes, Hedgehog. Or, or the Edgehog, that the girls and yes. she like to call it. Hedgehog. But yeah. So the Hedgehog then. Okay, so uh, I will press the... Uh, the, the magic, magic button. button, then it'd be over to you. So, whereabouts okay. is this magic button then? Is it what? It, I haven't moved it. All right, it's okay. still there. Okay. okay. Three, two, two one. one, go. Boop. Hello folks, welcome to the presentation for the Hedgehog, or the Edgehog, as the girls in the studio like to call it. I must admit, I do like the name Hedgehog, it's got a sort of ring to it. Anyway, here we have the piece. Um, when I'm sculpting a piece like this, it's a completely different sort of endeavour than a larger statement piece, obviously. But equally important, because when you've got a small subject, you still want it to shout loudly. Now to do that, I have to try and bring uh, the true character of the face coming out at you. Now to achieve this, um, I try and adopt a more almost animated caricature style with the sculpt. So even though, yes, I want it to look anatomically like an actual piece, or in this case, a hedgehog, I wanted to make sure that it actually was almost larger than life in that sense. So it looked at you because ultimately it is a piece of sculpture that I want to put you to put in your home and I want it to look at you. Also, I decided to sculpt it on its back for a very important reason. Usually when you see a hedgehog, they're scurrying around and you don't see the legs at all. So all you see is a very horizontal piece with the nose almost virtually sticking out, which could look great, but I decided I wanted to bring the little feet and little hands into play. So I've sculpted it in almost a pre-ball extent like that. Now the piece is actually hollow, even though you cannot tell, you can't tell from uh, this sort of small video. But to achieve that, I've had to sculpt in two sections. That means that when we cast it and we bring the two pieces together, it formulates a shell around the sculpt, meaning that we can get light going through both the sides, the back, and even the belly section at the top. And you have to take my word for it, they're there. <laughs> but you can't see it at this particular point. I think from a colour palette point of view, yeah, it's, it's got a very autumnal look to it. I know this is the spring, but I think the, the colour palette suits the particular piece. I think, uh, yeah, now I've, I think I've covered everything with it. I think it's time we looked at Dan's 360 presentation that he's already prepared. So off we go to that, folks.
Hello again, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, our first presentation of uh, the Hedgehog. I think um, you've done a, a stellar job of, uh, of that, Thank Matthew. You, and I, I think Thank everyone you. here um, really likes it. So I, uh, I think I hope, I'm, so. I hope. I hope so. I hope everyone out there does too. It's yeah. a there. It's yeah. a it's a lovely lovely little piece. Well done, you. Thank you very much. Um, I think going forwards with our uh, trade show theme, bearing in mind <laughs> it is the tenth. Uh, anniversary year, I guess, of the launch of Edge. I thought that it's it's uh, my turn to ask Daniel a question. Oh dear. So, <laughs> yes. So basically, my question would be now, bearing in mind Daniel logistically organises all of the trade shows, and by that, what I mean is, if you can imagine, you've got not only your passes and your registrations to sort out, but you've also got all of your equipment, your tools, every single minutiae that you need on the road to make sure that you can build a professional stand. Well, Dan takes care of all of that. All I really have to do is pack the pieces, I think. Nine <laughs> times out of 10. You and, know. I, and I've done that last two times. Yeah, well, that's no, right. No. Maybe I'll draw the stand a little bit, but apart from that. No, 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 you, no, yeah. you do, you, you, yep. you set out the Yeah, but stand. let's be honest though, Dan, sure it's all a little bit. And Dan is very fastidious, <laughs> really fastidious. Yeah, I have to leave him alone when he's doing that. He, he could get grumpy. <laughs> but, so my question to you, Dan, you. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, my question to you, Dan, is... Yes, go on, far away. Which show, yeah. if there is one, have you found the most taxing to orchestrate? Oh, I said, uh, there is a hands-down winner on this one. Sort but, but, of, but I, but I think, might be, well, let's go for it. I think, um, I, I think from, from a, an organi organisational Point of view, I think that the uh, the shows abroad are, cer are certainly, uh, yes. it's cer certainly more taxing than than, uh, than in Birmingham. It certainly are, I mean, yeah. you know, Birmingham's yeah. forty miles away. Um, if we forget anything, we can just pop back. But obviously, you can't do that if you're in Frankfurt or Paris. Uh, certainly not. So, so you have to make sure you've got everything, the kitchen sink and everything, definitely for those. However, there is one. That, that to features above all else is a sort of bit know, of a, I sort of know what's coming here, a, but yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, and that'll be our first Frankfurt. The first I think. Frankfurt, yeah. yeah. Which is, a, which is a, our first foray into Europe, um, mm. showing live, as it were. Yeah. Um, and um, in our wisdom, we decided that we'd do it all in, well, you we know, sort of, we'd driving and setting up all in, in one, one go. In one go, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, um, that was that was hair raising, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. I, I mean, it's not just the drive alone, which we, we shared. I did the UK. Matt did the, the Europe, going down there. But it was, you know, we didn't arrive there till the well, wee hours in the morning. Well, no, because that's well, we didn't leave till eleven. The thing no. is, this is another thing. We left at eleven thirty a.m., which of course is a little late if you've got a six hundred and fifty mile journey. And the reason we did that, <coughs> we thought. We'd build the show up all through the night. Yeah, I mean, we, we'd been sold on the premise that these uh, Frankfurt was open 24-7 as well. Yeah, which it wasn't. No, and we, we thought we'd obviously save a bit of time because um, obviously we've got stuff to do here as well. But, so we thought, well, we'll, you know, we'll take it on the chin and we'll we'll build it overnight. Yeah. Because it was a you know, relatively small stand compared to what we do here. So we yeah. thought, you thought, yeah, yeah. what well, couldn't <coughs> How, However, however, easier. yeah, I can remember holding you from falling asleep when you were <laughs> asleep, literally on the autobahns, because they go up that <laughs> steep. Yeah. And literally, I'm trying to make time and get there for about, uh, I think we were heading for midnight getting there, yeah. holding up. Anyway, we got there thinking, at least we can go straight in. How difficult could it be? We've done the we've done the NEC. It's relatively straightforward to know yeah. how to get in. Frankfurt isn't like that. It's larger than the NEC, but it's like a fortress in the middle of this in the middle of the city. And we drove around it and around it. Went to what's called the Rebstock car park. Nobody there. No clear way of getting in at all. No. This took us an hour and forty-five minutes of driving round yeah. and round. Yeah until we saw this ramp. And this ramp, it was about a 100 meter ramp going up three stories. And we could see the glimmer of a light kind of yeah, flickering. It, it was a down ramp rather than an up ramp. Yeah, it was the wrong, it? yeah, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Anyway, we, we couldn't see the up ramp. You know, Dan just went off running up this embankment sort of entrance, yeah. exit, whatever you want to call it. And the next thing I saw, I heard, and then I saw his head bobbing around, running towards this, uh, over this bridge. 
to this uh, security, yeah. hoping, because at this time we're really tired. I mean, my energy cans are running out. I mean, I've got about eight empty ones underneath the driver's seat, and I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to wear off. And all of a sudden, well, well, I waved down, and I'm Tim thinking, said, brilliant, so, no, there brilliant. Was, there was a, yeah, there was a security guy uh, yes. person there, and uh, Matt then. But the problem first all the way. All well, the way we weren't supposed to. No. But I, I pleaded ignorance and the fact that I might have English and I didn't understand a word of anyone said. And instead of having to go all the way around again, I just uh, just got on with it. And I just reversed the, the truck yeah, all and, the way up. And by the time anyone could protest, you were good at the top, it. so it was largely. Around. That's it. <laughs> and then we so. then we drove in thinking, yeah. at last, life. We're going to see everyone's busy hive of activity. <laughs> yeah. An ant's nest, and we got in. And there's nobody there. <laughs> it's huge, and we're the only ones. They're driving around, pitch black around the outside. Yeah. And we're thinking, is this definitely open? Even the security said it is. And we we arrived outside this huge steel shutter door. Yeah. Thinking, so how are we going to get in? It's shut. What's going on? Yeah. We both got out of the cab, walked towards this door, and. <laughs> <laughs> Just do your yeah. And next, before you've got this. <laughs> massive empty not not empty because people are constructing their stands but then not obviously they've gone home but yes it's, it's a, there. A, a empty of human looks a life. bit like an unbuilt Hollywood mm. set it's like that mm. a bit like that and the, these halls are massive I mean they're bigger than anything that you've got at the NEC that's how big the hall is but it's empty it's like a ghost town. Yeah, everything's well, left there very eerie in stasis it's like a Marie Celeste and yeah and we, were, we were there it's two o'clock in the morning we're freezing so we just start building this stand don't yeah. we and it's a bit tricky at first because it's eerie. It's just weird, isn't it? Though? Yeah, yeah. And but, then we've been driving for, you know, 600 odd miles as well. Yeah, so yeah it 12, took us 12 hours to get <laughs> it there. It wasn't so the, yeah. Build the stand up, yeah. going brilliantly. Even though we had to rebuild a wall that we brought going around a pillar we didn't know we had. And, and repaint their, and repaint their supposed their, white walls. Oh, yeah, I think it was on a trial line, by the way, we did that. Only to discover that the electrician hadn't been on our stand yet. So we, <laughs> so we were sort of, Scuppered, we couldn't finish. No, couldn't finish it. So, so what do we do then? <laughs> we went for a little walk about, as you do at five o'clock in the morning with nowhere to go because I hadn't booked hotel room because I wanted to save money and I was stupid. But then we got, we went, we thought, right, okay, we'll try and catch some sleep in the van when it's cold, freezing cold. Dan managed to cocoon himself, but I certainly didn't in the driver's seat. But uh, yeah, and they were supposed to, it, it took us another four hours to get this electrician after about eight o'clock. Mm. So we didn't get to this hotel till later, did we, Dan? Well, no, it was, uh, yeah. That um, was nuts. Packing up wasn't much better, was it, Dan, either, really? No, breakdown as, again. I mean, um, the, you always think of the Germans as being efficient. more efficient, don't you? So, so you're thinking, oh, you know, you, we're used to doing the NEC, so you think, well, the Germans are going to do it. Uh, Scary, wasn't it? Hell of a lot better. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Dodging um, forklifts going <laughs> it, it past wasn't. you would think no. that would, you know. No. But, but it, it was the money thing, isn't it? it it's basically, yeah. they have this really, almost, it would create a little bit of panic, actually. Yeah. But it's really odd. Because they have the situation where you have to hand over 250 euros in cash. Cash. And you don't get it back unless you get out of Dodge, which means you pack up at the end of this five day show within two hours and they give you the money back as you go out through the security gates. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, everybody then is panicking to get through these, yeah, yeah. out the gate. It's a bun fighter. Now, ordinarily, even that would have been tense enough or if we were just parked, I don't know, reasonable distance away. But because we're on what's called as a dark corner, which is where they experiment with all new <laughs> products. Yes. The whole entrances that we actually unloaded in the beginning were closed all the way around because they used the forklifts to put all the forklifts around there to take all the floors up. Problem is, I was at the other end. Yeah, yeah. And I say I because I had to go and get the van. Dan's on the stand. I couldn't communicate to him very easily that it was a mess. The Dutch were arguing with the German security. Everybody, no one had a clue. It was ridiculous. At least the Dutch had the common sense to to bring bicycles, bicycles with them, <laughs> yeah, who with, knew? with baskets <laughs> and tow hooks to tow, cycle everything round. And uh, but luckily, you know, I had a, a trolley. 
<laughs> well, it should have been a decent trolley, but the one thing, the one thing we relied someone else to do, could you put a trolley on the back of this van? Brilliant, thank you very much, you've been ever so helpful. No. We had a dodgy wheel, it was all it smashed in. Yes. So I couldn't it's wheel it. It's supposed to be a collapsed carry trolley, it. but it literally had collapsed. And I think that, I think, I think we managed to get out, but by the time we'd done it, oh, it's... even the lady on the stand next to us said, do you want to take it easy, but easy, lads? Because <laughs> I think we were having a cardiac arrest. It was dripping with sweat, red hot. Yeah. I mean, literally, I think on the way out, I think I had pieces all over my groin and everything. Everything was like Narnia in the back of that. It was, it just went it's in. Dry, it? It's dreadful, but we, we did it. But the thing is, you learn, don't you? So the, the next shows we did there were and sweet as a nut. You get punched in the face that bad on the first time round. You really know how to do it, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. But, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so yes, that 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 wins hands down. Yeah. It was a bit of a naughty question, a, really, a, because a I, challenge. I, I thought I knew which yeah, one. You was thought I, was I did. Say. I did. But it's an interesting sort of story. Yeah. Yeah. But also, also, any of you out there wanting to sell products in Germany in Frankfurt, you know, look into that aspect because that will catch yeah. you out more than. But, but it's a it's yeah. a great show to go to. To be fair. Oh, it is. We we, we yeah. want to go again. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Right, okay, so um, I think we should move on to our second we should. We presentation should. Yeah. of our spring new introductions. Yeah, which one are we going we? for second time? I, th I think we should, we should go with the orangutan bust. The orangutan bust, yes. okay. Okay. Yeah. So again, magic button time. Magic button, okay, so same place. Th yes, underneath, okay. I haven't moved it. So three, two, one, go. Boop. Hello folks, welcome to the presentation for the orangutan. Now I'll make no bones about it, I've wanted to sculpt an orangutan head for quite a while now. I mean, I sculpted the uh, gorilla around about eight, nine years ago. One of my favorite subject matters, huge King Kong fan. Um, sculpted chimpanzee, I mean, so really it makes sense to sculpt an orangutan head. But with an orangutan, it's slightly different because there's a common perception that an orangutan has, is a very wisdomous, knowledgeable creature, very humanistic. And that's what I wanted to really bring into the piece. So I didn't want to just sculpt uh, an animal head as an animal, but the way I look at it is I wanted a very humanistic, as I just said, and characterful representation of an orangutan. So with, the, with that in mind, when I sculpted it, I wanted to make sure that the expression and the eyes were engaging, soft, but yet thoughtful. Uh, no aggression at all, because I think, again, none of us look at an orangutan as having any sort of aggression at all, quite the opposite, and that's what I wanted to bring out into the piece. Structurally, orangutans are, are very different, though, in one sense from a, a, a gorilla or a chimpanzee because they have a very large cheek section. Now, what does this mean? This means when you're looking at the piece from the front or you're sculpting it from the front, you can't really see the travel from the piece in a three di from a three-dimensional perspective from the back. And so I was very aware of this. I didn't just want to it to look from the front. Oh, there you've got it. It's a big circle. It's a face like a moon. So what I've tried to do is bring the fringe coming in to this part, but also as it sweeps round both sides, you can see that the, you can start seeing the back of the head forming. And again, like most edge pieces, particularly the large ones, it allows light to permeate all the way through it. And that's again, both sides have got that element to it. Very important, because ultimately, even though uh, pictures can demonstrate what a piece looks like, in when you're putting them in a home environment, it's the 3D characteristics of it that become the most important. And again, even though the, the light here is very direct and very bright, and nobody has this sort of light set up in their house or in their home or what, whatever place they want to display any sort of piece, um, the, the holes with the piece and the, and the, and the edges will almost, in one res in respect, disappear, but the, in the other, let shadows and light permeate through it in all sorts of strange ways, hopefully. So yeah, I mean, on the whole, um, this is 
the orangutan presentation. I'll just show you guys the back, even though you don't display it on the back. It's just, I find things interesting anyway. What we've done is we've finished this piece off with a, uh, a copper hue to go with the orange hair. So there you have it, guys. I think now that leads us suitably up to Dan's 360 uh, turnarounds that he's already prepared earlier. So off we go to that. Hello and uh, welcome back everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, our presentation for the orangutan bust. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I think it's a, a triumph, uh, Matt. Uh, really nice piece, I really like it. Thank you very so, well much, done. thank you again. Thanks, Dan. No, well, yeah, uh, I, know you're, I know you're extremely modest, so um, I thought I'd, I'd sing your praises for you. Yeah, it was a piece I really liked sculpting, actually, the yeah. orangutan. Yeah, I think, I think uh, going back to, I think, the previous uh, film, I wanted to do another uh, head. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that, that, you know, with the gorilla head specifically, which is one of my personal favorites, I just wanted to do the orangutan piece. It's, no, it's, much, a, it's, uh, a, it's a good subject. For me, as it. much as anybody else, but yeah. So yeah, Well, um, like it, folks. Yeah, I, I, yes, I'm sure they will, I'm sure they will. Yeah. So uh, before that presentation, we were talking about... Um, Frankfurt. Frankfurt, yes. yes. And um, we... Uh, we did what three shows we did three Frankfurt. shows in all yeah and we would have done more only what happened is it sort of uh, there was an explosion of interest with edge at this particular point from the autovera spring fair to the point where we li literally had to get on top of manufacturing the uk, the UK was, yeah. yeah so we had to put the anchors on that a little bit mm -hmm. and i think that uh, it took maybe four years later before we thought look let's strike strike out to europe again only this time instead of Germany, the, the show that everyone seemed to be talking about, even though Frankfurt is still a hugely interesting show to do, was Maison et Objet, Objet. in uh, Paris. And uh, so we went through a process of, uh, of applying for it, which is very tricky. Yeah, it's not, it's okay. not a given by any chance. You have to, get, you have to broker your product with uh, pictures, etc. even stands that you do, because obviously they want to make sure that you know, you're not just going to turn up with with a mess or something they don't think befits their show. Uh, but needless to say, we got in, which is fantastic, really, really good. And then off we went again. So we're in 2018 at this particular point. Yeah. Um, I think about September, and we uh, yeah we head off to Maison. Yeah. Uh, again, I mean, uh, luckily it's not as long a drive as, as Frankfurt. No. Uh, and we and we no. we learnt from our mistakes and and didn't try to do it all in one go. No. I mean, but, uh, I mean, I think that one went really, really well. We also yeah. had a at that particular point we had a, a third wheel, which is my brother-in-law Paul. He was a tremendous help. I mean, at this that particular point, I think he flew in and we drove in. Is that right on the first one? Because we had one van. Or was it two on that? I can't remember. 
Yeah, we had one van on the first one. We only had one van. Yes. One van. I'll explain yeah. it in a minute. Had yeah. one van, a very heavy van. Yeah. But needless to say, we had a, a third help. And I mentioned third because the one faux pas of that particular show, again, wasn't anything else. The stand was went brilliantly well. The build up, the hotel room. <laughs> I booked the hotel room, and it was for three <laughs> hobbits. Yeah. And literally, I think. You always have these moments, you can't control it at all, and hindsight being a wonderful thing. But literally, we did this build-up, and opened the door, and we all bedraggled this hotel room. And I, I, honestly, all of us, it was like, you, you open this you door, open the door and, and this, this cupboard fell onto the bed. It was like, <laughs> yeah. it was awful, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, and it was so scary, I couldn't talk for about 15 seconds. And I immediately got in the lift, went down there, and it doesn't matter what money it was, you know, 2,000 euros, I'd have had it. Give me another room. There aren't any rooms. In French. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it doesn't matter, we, we just had to uh, model in. And unfortunately, um, when we say it was a bedroom for three, it was a double bed with two singles put together and this cot. <laughs> so you've got, so Paul was in this cot because we're brothers we had the two single beds together the cupboard space was no bigger than a bucket so all of our clothes and everything the cases were under the bed i mean it was it was pretty dreadful yeah, ropey yeah. wasn't it it was pretty bad it was it was bad i mean you get to know each other quite well within a small room like that you have to <laughs> but the mornings weren't fun getting ready trying to put your jeans on against the wall and trying to look half decent <laughs> But uh, yeah, we, we, I remedied that. The other, and, and the shows we did, we did four so far until yeah. COVID arrived, but we're far better than we had a smashing room, didn't we? Oh, massive yeah, yeah. television set, and everything, so. And yes, yeah, we've done uh, four shows fridge. in Mason, haven't we? Yeah. Um, I think we had in 2019, wasn't it? The, in the winter 2019, what, January, we, January. Had, we had a bit of a, a log jam, didn't we? We had a log jam because yeah. we had three shows yeah. In a row, and the reason, the reason we had three shows is during 2018, which is quite an eventful year because we were looking at uh, getting the Edge brand again, you know, kickstarting it globally. I was, I was talking to a, a Nesco LLC based in, in the States, based in you know, head office in uh, Chicago. Anyway, uh, literally uh, talking to uh, a really friendly chap called uh, Michael. Um, about launching Edge in the US. Would they be interested in this product? You never know. I mean, Dan and I had been discussing at one point launching it ourselves, mm -hmm. which would have been logistically difficult. We could have done, but Anesco and Department 56 have got a huge uh, knowledge base and reputation for qual both quality products and delivering product to shops and uh, galleries, etc., cetera, in, in the US. That went really, really well. I mean, literally, when I think, when Mike and I struck a, an accord straight away on the phone and he liked the product, which is great. You know, we had many conversations. And then it took probably from April to November to sort out a contract, a royalty contract, because that's how it works over there. Uh, and then it looked like we were just getting, just in time, getting everything sorted for a launch in Atlanta, which is, oh, there's a yeah, brilliant Atlanta, in uh, the January. So it's that tight. Mm -hmm. We had to ship so many products over there, all the pieces, and then I had to go over there leaving on the, the 4th, I think, something like that, of January, flying yeah. out to Atlanta. But also, <laughs> this, is, this is the tricky one, it was, could I bring something to sculpt, uh, a sculpt with me as a form of demonstration? Now, that seems straightforward, so I said, yeah, absolutely. So there I was sculpting this uh, elephant calf, it was the elephant calf, in the UK get it busy getting it finished because i thought christ look at the window the window's closing so i got it i got it finished yeah literally in the nick of time and then of course christmas hits i'm still having to nip in and get it sorted but then i figure that even though i've got hold luggage which i can which i do mm. i had to get this elephant in yeah. hand luggage yeah. and it wasn't going to go in hand luggage very well so all of a sudden I was in the situation, Dan, where I had to cut the head off this elephant and put it side, you know, almost side, but two parts mm -hmm. in this, 
you know, this, this cabin suitcase bag yeah. and wrap it up. And of course, try to bubble wrap this up with all my tools. This is another thing. Tools. The tools had to be in the, yeah. the giants because they were like... What's the sharp tools for me? Oh yeah. <laughs> what are these? They were like Edward Scissorhands. But they, they, all, they all went yeah, in there. Yeah. And of course customs, it's interesting. How, is there anything you'd like to declare anything interesting in your... Back? Well. Well, yes. I've, I've got a small elephant head. <laughs> and of course, immediately you know you're going to get searched again. And I thought, I thought even in, in, in England, oh, this, you know, it, 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 they haven't, they haven't batted an eyelid, but they did. And I had to get to it, but they were yeah. smiling about it. But it's bubble wrapping it back up because it's clay. Yeah. And I've got a, a really long flight and I don't want it to dry out, so I'm spraying it again with water. And it's, oh, it's difficult. Anyway, so I get to America in the end, three hours though in customs because they're on strike and it's red hot. Yeah. And all the time I'm thinking, this elephant's gonna be dry as a bone, no. Because the flight was about 11 hours. Get to the hotel room, uh, to about, I suppose, their time, probably around about 8.30 or something like that. And of course, as soon as I get into this hotel room, I'm literally throwing my, my other suitcase out, getting this thing out and putting it back together again. Because the day after, the morning after, I think about 11, I've got to take it in with me and start, you know, building, help building the stand-up, or ha at least having a look at it, because I haven't seen it, I haven't seen it. So yeah, it was really interesting. Mm. And uh, that show went brilliant. I mean, the, the, to put it bluntly, even though we've talked about Frankfurt being a huge, huge show, uh, which it is, America's Mart is on an, another level entirely. Yeah. I mean, literally, there's no end to it. We're getting some flaws, isn't it? Rather flaws, than being yeah, and we don't mean four or five, it's more like, I don't know, I don't know, there is, it's gotta be 10 floors plus, but it's, it's vast, it's ridiculous. It's like the biggest shopping center you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, yeah. It just catches you out, everything, the scale of everything. And even the hotel room I was in, I think I was on floor number 39 or something, but it was it was just epic. Mm. I mean, I love the place, for once. everything was so friendly, but such a different experience. But the way their show yeah, is, is different. Shock. Yeah, I mean, Germany, France, and, and Britain are very similar, the way you build your stand up. Yeah. And they have that, but it's, it's more like, it, like a shopping centre. It's like a shopping centre, yeah. yeah. So it, the, the ceilings are lower, but there's, it's so much of it. It's it's insane. It's fast. But yeah. But then, of course, Dan's busy. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we know, at the same meanwhile, time. Um, because of uh, Maison was in at the end of, uh, of January, so uh, Matt was in Atlanta, so myself and Paul had to uh, drive the vans over to Maison and set up at the same time Matt was in Atlanta. Yeah, that's right. So uh, that, went, that went okay. I mean, we had problems with um, tears in the, the walls because what they do, they have what's called a shell scheme wall and there, theirs are made of material. Yeah, yeah. And I got there and th there was rips in it and there was cables all over the place. So but that took a while to sort out. That took half a day um, lost. And of course, um, we don't give us, ourselves that much of a window, unfortunately, to, to set these no. things up. But um, obviously, we set it up, and I think you were you were due to arrive on the uh, well. That's right. The day um, after. Well, that's it because I. Which is the day before the show. It, this wasn't it? is how tight it yeah. was. Literally, I had to fly back. Now, this elephant's very important because we were due to release it at the Spring Fair, which is after Maison. So what I had to do is get this um, this two-parted elephant uh, back home. Got stuck at Atlanta Airport as well. Yeah. The uh, elephant head joke didn't go quite so well there. <laughs> no, 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 it didn't. There I was standing with no no socks and shoes on. <laughs> we won't go there. Nothing else, no gloves. But I was, was going to say, no, no, no. Anyway, I got, had to get it back mm. while Dan had left, so I arrived, yeah? Yeah. And literally, I think Paul, funnily enough, picked me up. Yeah? No, no, well, I was, was going to say he, that, he, we... He scooted back, and like literally, I had to then finish this elephant, hurry it mm. up, get it into rubber, so that then we could cast it and get it ready for the spring fair. So these guys left to do build the ship, build the stand. Mm -hmm. Then I had to literally. I think I finished it at about so like six o'clock in the evening. Then in the morning I was at the airport. I was I literally by this point I was yeah, I was gone. Yeah. So we'd we'd finished the stand at that point. Luckily we finished yeah. it quite early. So we thought. We thought we'd surprise you oh, and uh, go and pick, yeah. you, pick you up. But um, driving a Luton van to Charles de Gaulle isn't, no. isn't the most, <laughs> it wasn't the best idea. No, but it worked though, didn't it? Yes, it did. No, it was really good and they picked me up and then not. And then we went back and before we knew it, knew it literally the day they picked me up, the morning after was the, it was the show started, yep. didn't it? 
and that he was it, it went fantastically well again. Yes. Yeah. We've had the France. Then, uh, France has been brilliant. In fact, to be honest, you know, three shows later after that, so we've done four shows in Maison. Everything going really well. The accounts we've got, you know, brilliant. Belgium, France, Germany, Italy. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, we, our efforts in, again, in Britain with the Spring Fair and Autumn Fair um, were, you know, as much effort as you could put in. And then COVID hits. Yeah. So that literally takes us all the way yeah. up okay. to, to where we find ourselves. We're up to date. But then I think next year we want to definitely look at going to Europe yes, again. Yes, I mean, but you know, obviously when we did the presentation last time, we were, we were saying, oh, 2021 yeah, will be better. Yeah, that's right. And now we're all going, 2022 this, will yeah, be better. Yeah, I, th I think but, this year's going to be this year's. Yeah, now. it's uh, another Absolutely. right off with the uh, show. So, yeah. But yeah, so I think um, we should move on to our to third presentation. Third presentation. Yes, yeah. which uh, will be the uh, French Bulldog. It's a French Bulldog. Yes, in uh, four different colourways. Four different colourways. Yes, yeah, and so I think uh, with uh, no further ado, I think we should uh, start Press it. that. Yes, button. okay. Yeah. Three, okay. two, one, one. Go. Boop. folks welcome to the presentation for the French Bulldog now I know a lot of you have wanted a French Bulldog particularly when I started sculpting the Staffordshire Bull Terrier I was actually flabbergasted by the number of people who also wanted a Frenchie so I really felt that I had no choice having said that I really did enjoy sculpting it he's a playful little creature and he's got a lot going for him from a sculpture perspective particularly with the ears and the eyes being quite so bulbous, it makes for an interesting sculpt. Also, similarly to the uh, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, we also felt we needed to introduce him with more than one colour, because obviously every dog owner is very passionate about the dog colour that they've got, or the breed colour orientation of their personal pet. Um, so here we have a brindle, we have a blue, and although rare, voices again do speak very loudly on particularly Facebook, so we've added a blue one. I actually think it looks like a, it brings the piece out very nicely, so a very attractive looking color. Uh, this is pied, which in essence is black and white. And here we also have fawn, which is, I guess, the, the typical color for a French bulldog. We've also added a metallic hue on the inside of each piece. We have a copper running on the inside of the brindle. I do apologize for the sound of the turn table. We also have a metallic blue for the blue. Going over to the pied, we have a silver finish, really goes with the white aspect. And then for the fawn, we have gold. Now obviously you don't really display the pieces at the back, but we think it's a nice touch anyway, so we, that's what we've done. Um, so yeah, four musketeers. And now I think it's time to go to Dan's 360 presentation that he's already completed. So off we go.
Hello everybody, um, I hope you enjoyed our presentation of our Frenchy, uh, French Bulldog, yep. uh, in the four different uh, colourways. Indeed, four different colourways, which of course you have to do with dogs because obviously people want to purchase a piece that represents their breed colour, not just the dog itself. And we found this out way before I even introduced the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, even with the original Bull Terrier piece, people, the colours are very, very important. Yep. So we hope we've got the colours that you folks want. Of course, like the Staffy, in the future we may look at additional ones, but for now we hope that fits the bill. Yes, I, I'm pretty, I hope yeah. it ticks all the boxes, I'm pretty sure it But will. that isn't it, is it, Dan? No, we've got no, something it's not else. It. We have a, a yeah. little surprise. Uh, we've got we one last um, presentation. Yeah. Um, I don't know if uh, any of you remember, uh, but last year we launched uh, a range of limited editions called Panther Alley, so there were different colourways of our Panther Bust piece. And we released that at the last trade show yep. we did before pre-Covid. A really impressive stand that as well, Dan, 12 yep. metres long. We had a, a, lovely display on a zebra yep. carpet underneath, very kitsch, mm -hmm. and it worked brilliantly. It was a bit of fun, but it worked well. So we really wanted to do something similar this year. And I think Dan had a cracking idea, so... Yeah, well, yeah. well it, it, we both put our heads together yeah, and trying to yeah. think of something uh, we could do in a similar vein. So uh, we came up with uh, the, the Bulldog, um, the British Bulldog. Yeah. So we, we've come up with... Um, we had a, we had a little play with it, didn't we? With the names, regarding the names and yeah. the colours. And, so, so and the title, Dan. Something very British. Oh, yes, the title. Uh, we're calling it Bulldog Walk. Bulldog so, Walk. So we had Panther yeah. Alley, we've got Bulldog That's Walk. That's right, yeah. And so, yes, the, the names we had a lot of play with, um, but you know, on a, on a vein of Britishness, didn't we? Very much so. Yes. But with a slight sort of whimsical take on the names. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, Quintessential, uh, but whimsical at the same time. So you go first. Okay, the names. Yes. Well, basically, to give you a sort of like a bit of a taste, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, we have English mustard, and we also have... Brown sauce. And you have to say it in that accent. Brown sauce. <laughs> yeah. But to go to brown sauce, you need Tommy K. So we got Tommy K. And then after that, what have we got? Pink gin. Oh, well done, Dan. He's got to the bubble. Pink gin. Excellent. Yeah. Bowling green. And then we go for number six. Bobby blue. Bobby blue. And this is where we're trying to remember what number seven was. Earl Grey. Earl Grey. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done. I was struggling then. I was struggling. Yeah. So basically seven new colours. Well, a limited editions of 50s for the Bulldog. Now these are one, you'll soon see, what am I talking yeah, about? Yeah, you'll soon exactly. see exactly. You might, might as well let the video speak for itself. Yeah, well, you might as well, might yes. as well, but I mean, by rambling. Yeah, okay, yes. so, uh, yep, yeah, magic button time. Magic button, magic button. Okay, three, two, two one, one, go. This is so comfortable. Okay, Matt, we're, we're rolling. Rolling. We're certainly not rolling now, I assure you. <laughs> Are you okay over there? Yes, it's, it's brilliant. I, you know, I'm, I'm so happy we didn't do an eighth, that's all I can <laughs> say. I'd, I'd, I'd be wearing it. Some might say we did. <laughs> well, yeah. there were, we were muting nine at one point, but yes, seven it is. No, admittedly it is tight over there. We had to, we had to build the set around him. He's been standing there for two hours. I can attest to this, they, he certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now I do believe that Dan is going to um, uh, name the colours of Bulldog Walk or introduce them on the top yeah. row because I can't see them. And then I am going to continue with the ones on a level that I can see. So over to you, Daniel. Okay then, uh, starting top row from left to right as you look at it, we have Bowling Green. In the middle we have Bobby Blue. And the one closest to that is English mustard. English mustard, it's got a bit of bite, this one. Yes. <laughs> and then on the bottom row, we have pink gin. Then we have brown sauce. Then we have Earl Grey. And finally, Tommy K. And they're all over to you, Dan. Yes, well, um, as we said earlier, these are limited edition pieces of 50 only, that's 50 each. And they will come with a certificate of authenticity. Uh, each one hand signed by Matt. 
Indeed. and individually numbered. And also the piece itself will be hand signed by Matt uh, with the individual number coinciding with the certificate of authenticity. Absolutely. Yeah. I will have to say though, Dan, just this sequence alone, this little micro presentation, mm -hmm. does demonstrate the strengths of doing a trade show where you have walls to show the product off. Absolutely. You know, it, it, there is no other way of doing it and keeping all the pieces together. But yes, we've, we've tried our level best. Yes. However, oh. I do have a, a 360 um, presentation after this. He we'll, does. We'll just to show one of them, obviously. One, but, um, not all seven. No, no, no. no. Uh, but, that. but yeah, hope you liked our final presentation, folks. So we'll jump from here, and then say goodbye. And there we have it. Bye. <laughs>
there he is. Kong right in the corner. There you go. Now stunned for the interior show 2014. Here's new stand, here's Danny. We've only just finished this stand. Very tiring, but very happy with it. Very good, very good. Just a smile, Danny. It is two o'clock in the morning. He's taking snaps. Hey, you should get here, isn't it, Dan? Yeah? And there's no one here, it's just a complete ghost, Bill. Oh, automatic setting up. All right, Dan. It's about 5.30 in the morning, but this is absolutely vast. This is like an entrance lobby. And it's huge. The luxury of it all. Oh. <laughs> you ain't going down. Finally, our stand, and we're here. Oh, and there's nice. someone we know already it is, Daniel. Hello everybody, please you. Yes. Siding out. Go slam so you can see what it's like. So obviously we start off with edge and it's a Grinch. There you go. We've got beginnings of edge in the US. Compact and bijou. Sloth here. And elephant 
say hello to everybody, goes past. It is very much like a shopping centre, it looks just like that. And as you pan out, they've got their own popcorn machine. Sky Bridge leading one to another, but look at the size of it. Honestly, it's ridiculous. This is an exhibition centre. Here we are at uh, a trade show in Paris, uh, Maison et Objet. Now Maison et Objet is a huge show I and mean, it spans their entire exhibition complex. It's got so many products, I mean they vary from everything that you probably buy for your home or gift or, or whatever. I mean literally it's so diverse. Yeah.